So we'll start as per usual, just lying down on the mat and taking this time to take a few nice deep breaths in and out. So with, with the lying down, it's entirely up to you whether you want to lie with your knees over the top of a cushion or whether you're just happy to let the knees drop out to the sides, pulling the heels in towards you as much as you can and just feeling that really nice stretch as you open out through the hips. And then taking a few deep breaths in and out and just letting your body melt down into the floor, just releasing, relaxing, letting go of all tension. And just noticing where your mind is at as well. And just trying to bring your mind to the present moment in time. So forgetting anything that has just passed or anything that has not yet happened. Just thinking about the present moment in time, the things that you can hear. Notice the feelings in your body, the lifting of your chest and stomach with your inhale, the lowering as you breathe out. Relaxing your jaw, your eyes. And then just ever so slightly nodding the chin in towards your chest. Just feeling that stretch through the back of your neck, keeping the head on the floor. Just feel that light stretch through the back of the neck. And then release. And just thinking of a positive affirmation that you'd like to take with you for the day. And it may just be for this class or it might be for the rest of the day or the week. I am focused purely on my body and breath or I'm happy and content. I'm in control and organized, whatever it may be. So sometimes if you're struggling to think of a positive affirmation, it can actually be easier to think of something that you don't want or something that's bothering you and just reverse it. So if you're feeling stressed, you might want to say, I am calm and in control. And just repeat whatever it is three times to yourself. Just noticing how your body feels. And then bringing both knees in towards each other, taking the hands out to the side. And you can either just turn both knees over to one side or for a slightly harder version, take your left knee over the right, cross it over, and then just draw the knee over to the left side. So you're using the top of the left leg to just get a little bit more Good, looking the opposite way of the knees, really feeling that twist through your spine. Deep breaths. And slowly coming up to center on your next breath in and then change over to the other side, so crossing the other leg over and just rolling across. Turning the head the opposite direction of the knees. and then slowly coming back to center. Bring the knees in towards the chest and hug it out. 
just gently rocking from side to side. And then taking both legs up. And this is where you might want a strap or a band around the legs just to hold around the feet if you struggle to get a hold of the legs. And push the heels away, so pull the toes down towards you. And then pointing the toes all the way up towards the ceiling. And then again, push the heels away. And we're going to release one leg to the ground. Keep a hold of one of your legs. And we're going to take the opposite hand to opposite leg. So it may be that you're holding your right leg with your left hand around the thigh, or it could be on the calf, or you could be holding on the toe. And we're just going to reach that leg across the body and into a spine stretching twist again. But with this one, really think about the stretch through the outside of the leg as well. So you're trying to bring that leg as close to the floor as you can and then pull it up towards your head as best you can as well. The other arm is out at the side and to stop yourself from rolling all the way across, you might just want to look at the other arm that's reaching out. Good, and then slowly coming back in. And this time you're going to take the hand with the same leg. So my right leg I'm holding with my right hand now, and I'm taking it out to the side and just trying to stop the left hip from rolling across with me. So you might even want to place your left hand on the left hip and try and push it down as you feel that nice inner thigh stretch. And again, you're trying to pull the foot up towards your head and really open out through the leg. Really feeling that inner thigh stretch. Deep breaths in and out. And then using the stomach muscles, pull that leg back into center, release it down to the ground, and taking the other leg up this time. So pull the leg in towards you, just a straight leg at this stage. And then taking opposite hand to opposite leg. So my right hand is holding somewhere on my left leg, whether it's thigh, calf, or holding onto the toes. And we're twisting across to the right side if you've got your left leg. So we're coming across the body into that rotation and just keeping the left hand on the ground if you're doing the same leg as me. Left arm and shoulder stays down. Trying to bring the left foot as far up towards your head as you can whilst keeping the leg as low to the floor as you possibly can. Feeling that stretch through the outside of the leg. Deep breaths, try and relax into the stretch. Using a band if you need to. And then slowly curling back in, holding same arm as same leg this time. So change the hand that's holding onto the leg or foot. And using the right hand to try and stop the right hip from coming up. Let the left leg drop out and open to the side. Really feeling that stretch through the inner thigh. And then slowly bringing that leg back into center, bringing both knees over to one side and rolling yourself up to sitting. Good, so we're going to sit. 
in a cross-legged position and just have a bit of a stretch out through the neck and shoulders, surrounding through the shoulders first of all. Nice. And the other direction. Good, and then looking over one shoulder, so getting a really nice stretch out through the neck. And then looking over the other shoulder. Good, and bringing the head back to center. Drop the ear towards the shoulder, reach the hand away and just feel that lovely stretch through the side of the neck. So you don't need to use the hand, just the weight of the hand though, creates that little bit extra more of a stretch. But try not to yank the head down with the hand, so it's just a light hold. Good, and then changing over to the other side. and slowly rising up onto all fours so we're just going to stretch out into our cat and cow so arching all the way up into a beautiful cat stretch and then releasing taking the tailbone up drop the shoulders down and again into cat stretch and then arching all the way up good and the last time Great, and then release. So we're gonna tuck the toes underneath us and come into our downward dog. You're gonna need your grip for this. So taking off any socks if you've got them on and just pushing all the way up, spreading the fingers out. And to start off with, you might just find that you need to walk the legs out as they might be a bit tight. Just trying to push one heel down whilst you straighten the other leg. And then from here, bring your body weight forwards over the top of the hands. So remember, your easy option is to drop on the knees, hard version, stay on the toes, exhale down in Chaturanga, and then inhaling up into Cobra, dropping the shoulders down your back, exhaling downward dog, and just work your way gently through with your breath. So inhaling to come forwards, exhaling to lower, inhaling up into Cobra, drop the shoulders as you lift up, make sure they're not by the ears, and then exhaling, pushing back into downward dog. And in downward dog, just making sure that we're really taking the tailbone up to the ceiling. So work with your breath, exhale to lower, inhale to lift, and exhale, downward dog, before walking all the way up to the front of your mat. Good, and relaxing here. Just dangling down, just let your body dangle. And just swaying from side to side. And then gradually uncurl all the way up to standing. And as we come up to standing, switch your bum on and raise the arms up all the way, squeeze the bum, and then exhale to swan dive all the way down. Inhale to straighten through the spine, and exhale to fold. Now guys, feel free to let me know if this microphone's doing weird crackly things it has been known to, so please unmute yourself, let me know if it is, and I'll try and change it. We're gonna take a nice deep breath in and take a big stride back with the right leg. And then from here, straightening through the left, and then bend. So working with your breath. Exhale to try and straighten the leg, bring the head to the knee. Inhale to bend. And last one, exhale to straighten. Inhale to bend. Then taking both legs back, exhaling down in Chaturanga. Inhaling up into Cobra. Exhaling downward dog. 
Inhale to raise your right leg up into three-legged dog. This is optional. And then exhale to swing that leg in between the hands. Just make it a really big stride here. Wiggle the foot forwards if you need to. Inhale to reach up into warrior one. Exhale into warrior two, looking towards that front hand. Turn the palm up to the ceiling and then reaching the hand up, the right hand up to the ceiling, the left hand down the back leg. <laughs> That's it, nice. Good, and holding it there in that reverse warrior. Feel your sides working to hold you. Just watch that front knee, Nathan, is just rolling in, yeah, beautiful. So we're watching that the front knee stays in the center of the foot and it hasn't veered off in front of the big toe, inside the big toe, I should say. And then slowly coming down, bring the hand to the thigh for the easy option. Reach the arm over the top or bring the hand to the floor and holding it there. Good, nice deep breaths in and out. Really feeling nice and open here. If you don't, if you feel that shoulder dropping, take the left hand into the lower back, open and push yourself out and then reach the hand out. If you want to, you can always keep that hand in the lower back though. Then on your next inhale, lifting all the way up, exhale to sink down into warrior two again, looking at the front hand and then bring both hands down either side, stepping it back. Exhaling down in Chaturanga, inhaling up into Cobra, dropping the shoulders. Exhaling down with dog, holding it here. And then inhale to raise your left leg up into three-legged dog. Exhale to swing that leg in between the hands. Reach up on an inhale into warrior one. Have a quick check on that front knee. Exhale, warrior two. Don't let the knee pivot inwards. Turn the left palm up to the ceiling. We've got the left arm up to the ceiling this time, right hand down the back leg in that reverse warrior. So holding it there. Deep breaths. Feel your sides holding you in that position. If you do need a little bit of extra support, then holding the thigh, but trying as best you can to not have to rely on that hand. And on your next inhale, bring the hand to the thigh or to the floor for the hard option, right hand over the top of the head. Good, holding it there. Remember, if you need to feel more open through the front of the chest, taking the hand into the lower back to open out the chest some more. And then on our next inhale, lifting all the way up. Exhale to sink down. Good, and then taking both hands down, stepping it back, exhaling down in Chaturanga, nice and slow. Inhale up into Cobra or Upward Dog if you're feeling like a slightly harder version on the tops of the toes. Um, and then exhale into Downward Dog. Now your choice, you can either walk your feet forwards or you can bend your knees and lightly jump forwards Exhale to fold, and then inhale, lift the hands out, lifting all the way up, squeeze your bum to protect the back, open the chest, and then exhale, release into prayer. Good, taking a nice deep breath in again, reach the arms up nice and high, squeeze the bum, open out through the chest, only as far as feels comfortable. Exhale to swan dive all the way down. Inhale to straighten through the spine, it might mean coming up quite high with the hands and that's fine. Exhale to fold. Inhale, big stride back with the left leg this time and hold it there. We're going to exhale to straighten the right leg, try and bring the head down towards the knee and then inhale to bend. And then exhaling to straighten, inhale to bend. And one last time, exhale to straighten, inhale to bend, excellent. And taking both legs back, exhaling down in Chaturanga, Inhaling up into Cobra or Upward Dog. Exhaling Downward Dog. Inhale, take your left leg up this time first into Three-Legged Dog. And then exhale, swing that leg in between the hands. Reach up into Warrior One. Good. And then from here, we're actually going to come into our rotation, half spinal rotation. So we're going to take the right hand onto the left leg. 
the left hand behind your back and then we rotate round. That is your easier option. If you want a slightly harder option, right hand comes onto the ground on the inside of the foot, left arm lifts up. Think of your back knee being pulled up to the ceiling, so make sure it's not bent, it's being pulled up. Imagine your right heel as if it's trying to go down to the ground again, so feel that energy coming out through the calf and the back leg. Look up to the ceiling if it's comfortable for the neck, or just let the head drop to the floor. Good, now using your stomach muscles, we're gonna pull back up into warrior one again. So lift up, lovely, exhale into warrior two. Reverse warrior, so left arm, palm turns up, left arm up to the ceiling, right arm down the back leg. Lovely, keep holding it there. And then bringing that hand to the thigh, reach the other arm over the top, or bring the hand to the floor for that harder version. And then inhale, lifting all the way back up. Exhale, sinking into warrior two, taking both hands down either side of the foot, stepping it back, exhaling down in chaturanga, inhaling up into cobra, or upward dog, exhale, downward dog. Inhale to raise your right leg up into three-legged dog, and then exhale to swing that leg in between the hands. We're going to reach up into warrior one, and then come into our rotation. So the left hand onto the right leg, right hand into the lower back for the easier option. Hand to the ground, left hand to the ground, right hand to the ceiling for your harder option. Lift the back knee up towards the ceiling. Push the back heel down as if you're trying to get it to the floor. Nice deep breaths. In and out as you hold it here. And then using your stomach muscles, swing those arms up into warrior one. Exhale into warrior two, check your front knee is in a nice straight line. Right hand turns up to the ceiling, right hand lifts up, left hand down into reverse warrior, nice one K. Okay. Good, just watching that that knee hasn't rolled across. Deep breaths in and out. Doing what feels right, doing what feels comfortable. And then slowly bringing that hand to the thigh or to the floor, we'll reach the other arm over the top of the head, opening out through the chest, deep breaths in and out. And then inhale to reach all the way back up, exhale to sink down. Good, taking both hands down either side, stepping it back, exhaling down in Chaturanga, inhaling up into Cobra. Exhale, downward dog, and then bend the knees, either walk or jump your feet forwards. Exhaling to fold, inhale to reach the hands out, lift up into that backward bend, and exhale to release. Good, take a nice deep breath in, squeeze your bum, open the chest, leaning back. Exhale to swan dive all the way down. Inhale to straighten through the spine. Exhale to fold. Inhale, this time take the right leg back, but not so far. So about half the distance that you were before. And just whilst we're here, have a look and make sure that your front heel is lined up with the back instep and the back foot is on a diagonal, pointing the toes forwards. From here, we're gonna to inhale to reach up. And I want you to keep the hips facing 
the short side of your mat at the front here. Couple of options, you can either have your hands free to hold onto the floor for support or you can hold onto your elbows. We're gonna come into pyramid. So you can either hold onto your elbows or come into reverse prayer. So you come into a reverse prayer position behind your back. So a few different options there. Turning to face that front leg that's straight and then open the chest out and hinge forwards, keeping the back as straight as you can for as long as you can. When you can't keep it straight any longer, then just let your body drop over the front of that, over the top of that front leg. So the front leg is bent, uh, sorry, the front leg is straight and you're bending your body over the top of that leg. Just let your head go, let your head relax and whatever arm option if the hands are behind your back and holding on, you might feel a bit of a stretch through your chest. If your hands are holding onto the floor, that's absolutely fine. It's just giving you that extra little bit of support, but really feel that stretch through the hamstring there, through the back of the leg, as you come forwards into our pyramid pose. and then slowly inhale to reach all the way up. Good, and then taking the hands up, lift up towards the ceiling, turning the legs, so we're gonna face the other way, changing the hands into whichever option you want, whether your hands are just going to be coming down to the floor or whether you're holding your elbows or reverse prayer. We're going to open out through the chest again and then exhale to come down over the top of that straight leg. So we should be on the right side this time. The right leg nice and straight. And let your head dangle and relax. Try not to hold on for dear life. And in this position, as well as feeling a stretch through the hamstring, through the shoulders, if you've got your hands behind your back. You might also feel that it's a bit of a balance challenge here as your legs are almost in a tight rope position with one foot directly behind the other. And you might feel all those muscles in your feet working to keep you balanced. And then taking a nice deep breath in, looking up ahead of you, lifting all the way up. Good, relaxing the arms by your side, reach them up to the ceiling. Turn your body to face the long side of your mat. And then I want you to walk the feet out, and I'm just gonna turn so I can see you guys. Walk the feet out as far as you can. Toes slightly turned in. Now a couple of options for this, we're going really, really wide. Hands can still be on the ground for your easy option. Hands can either be um, interlocked behind your back. So actually I'll turn around again so you can see. So just my hands are interlocked behind my back and as we come down into a wide forward bend, those hands are gonna go over the top of your head. So it's entirely up to you which option you go for. So nice deep breath in. If you're there already, don't worry. If you're not, nice deep breath in to open out, exhale to come all the way down and either have the hands supporting you on the ground or interlocked and over the head. Good, so really think about whilst you're holding this position, where your weight is distributed in your feet. So have you got all your weight forwards on your toes, which means that you're gonna be feeling a lot of your body weight in the front, or have you got most of your body weight on your heels? You actually need it distributed evenly between the two. So it might be a case of rocking forwards and backwards a little bit and just feeling where you are placing most of your body weight. So whether you can feel it on the heels, on the toes, or in the middle. Mm. 
Nice deep breaths, feel that beautiful stretch through the back of the legs. Trying to lengthen through your body, so really feel the tailbone going up to the ceiling. And then if you do have your hands interlocked, keep them interlocked and you're going to reach them up as you look up towards the ceiling and then use your lower back and your stomach to help pull you up. If the hands are on the floor, then you're going to place one hand onto your hip and then slowly raise all the way up to standing. Good, and just bring the legs in, just give it a bit of a shake out. We're gonna come into the tree now. So we're going to place one leg. This is your easy option. We're gonna do a hard option as well. So you're going to place your foot either onto the lower part of the leg, which is the easiest option, because then it's quick to get the foot back onto the ground if you need to for balance, or we're gonna be placing that foot onto the inner thigh, or harder option again, is coming into a half lotus position. So it's like a half cross-legged position where that foot, the palm is facing up. Now, if you've got your balance and you want to stay in the tree, then feel free to lift the arms overhead, or you could go with wide arms, so it's entirely up to you. If you're wanting more of a challenge, we're gonna come into a seated tree. So for this, I'll turn side on so you can see what's going on. You're going to keep this foot in the half lotus position, it's gotta be in that position for this. And then you're going to bend down, slightly bend that knee, but come into a forward bend, and then bend the bottom leg, and you're just resting on the ball of your foot, so the heel is lifted off. Now when you've got your balance, so you need to be looking at a spot that's not moving, I'll pivot around again so you guys can see now. So when you've got your balance, looking at something that's not moving, lift one hand up. And then, if you have your balance, lifting whoa, the other hand up, which I don't today. So I would just be practicing with one hand here, until I got my balance on that one side. So holding whichever option, that full tree or the crouching tree, just to show you to come out of the crouching tree, you just straighten that leg and then lift all the way up again. So one more deep breath in and out, wherever you may be. And then slowly releasing that leg down. Good, and changing to the other side. So again, we're going to come up with that foot, either resting on the lower leg into the inner thigh or half lotus, that's it, Verity, nice. <laughs> and then bending that straight leg just slightly to bring the hands to the floor, then crouching down with this option. So I'm gonna be much better on this side because this is my uninjured ankle side and holding that balance there. So whichever option you've gone for, keep your breath and keep your gaze focused. So keep nice deep breaths coming in and out. Good, last deep breath. And then slowly releasing that off. Nice, giving the leg a bit of a shake. We're going to take a deep breath in to reach up with the hands and sit back into chair. So make sure your knees and feet are hip distance apart. And from here, slowly straighten your legs but keep your chest on your thighs so you're only straightening as far as you can with your chest remaining on your thighs good bending the knee take a big stride back with the right leg drop the knee to the ground drive the hips forwards and come into that half crescent moon now your easy option hands are in your lower back to help support your back harder version arms overhead and just drive the hip forwards and open out through the chest Great. Really getting as much backward bend in as feels comfortable for you. Drive the hips forward so you're feeling that beautiful stretch through the hip on that back leg. 
and then slowly bringing the hands down, stepping it back, exhaling down in Chaturanga, inhaling up into Cobra or Upward Dog, exhaling Downward Dog, inhale to bring your right foot forwards between the hands, drop the left knee to the ground, so wiggle that foot forwards if you need to, drive the hips forwards, push the knee forwards as you lift up into Half Crescent Moon on the other side. Good, deep breaths. Good, holding it there. One more deep breath in and out. Lovely, and then releasing it down here. Taking both legs back again. So we're staying down. And then up to you, you can either take a break and come into this another way, but we're gonna come into a side plank. So if you're going for your hard option, you're just gonna pivot. If you want to do an easier option, drop to the knee and then have that bottom arm straight. If the wrist does not like this position, you can always come down into an elbow option. So making sure, whether it's elbow or hand, that it's directly underneath the shoulder there. Good, so from here, we're gonna come into a twist. So we're gonna twist our body underneath, and you can still do this with the elbow version, and then lift back up and try and open out. Good, and again, so exhale, twist and round your body, trying to get through the hole, and then lift back up. Good, two more, twist and round. Good, and last one. Excellent. And then releasing it down, changing to the other side. So we're going to lift up with our left hand on the ground. Well, actually, I'm not too sure if everyone did the same as me last time, but switch to the other side. And then we're twisting across and then lifting up. Good, and twisting across, and then reach up. Two more, twist, and lift, and last one, twist, and lift. Great stuff, and releasing it there. Now we're gonna come into the shoulder stand. It's a pretty tricky um, yoga pose. There's a couple of reasons why you wouldn't want to do it. So if you've got a bad neck, avoid doing this one. If, you, um, if it's the time of the month, then avoid this because obviously your blood flow is gonna be going down rather than, you know, back in rather than out. So if either of those apply to you, you are just going to do a nice hamstring stretch. Now, whether you place a band around your ankles or whether you just hold on to your legs, and that's absolutely fine. If you can get into the shoulder stand, then you're pushing all the way up and holding your back with your hands. So just lifting up as high as you possibly can. The plow, the, the feet go behind the head, and then staying where you are, I'm just gonna roll out myself, Good, and then holding it there. So just making sure that you are doing what feels comfortable for you. Lovely, your head stays looking at your knees, so don't look at the video, because I'm not doing it, so there's no point in looking at me, just look straight up at your knees, making sure that you're in the correct position, you're not twisting your neck, and just walking the hands down your back closer to your shoulder blades, not your hips. And that just helps to lift you up and push you up a little bit more. And if you do have yourself balanced, if you have come back into the plow and you're nicely balanced, you can take your hands away and then ever so slowly using your stomach muscles, roll down one vertebra at a time. 
towards the ground. Now either a single leg or a double leg lower to the ground. Single leg is easier, double leg is harder. Make sure you have the stomach strength and your back does not arch. Nice, and we're gonna come into our fish, which is our counter pose. We're going to place the hands underneath your bum so they're flat with the palms facing the floor. Elbows, just try and tuck them underneath you as best as you can. So really squeeze the shoulder blades together. Looking up towards the toes, prop yourself up onto your elbows and really puff the chest out. And when you've gone as far as you can, you're gonna let the head drop back, but you need to make sure that the crown of the head touches the floor. So you're not just in mid air here, the crown of the head touches the ground. And you're, you will find that you'll probably have rocked backwards a little bit onto the wrists rather than the hands, and that is absolutely fine. Now stay where you are, don't move and don't look at the camera because I'm not doing it. There's two ways to come out of this. So you're gonna stay in this beautiful stretch here, but there's just two ways of coming out. The first way is the easiest way. So don't try it just yet, but listening. And it's just sliding the head down onto the ground and sliding the hands out. So that's your easiest way. Now the second way is harder and I prefer it because it helps to build strength through the front of the neck. But if you know that your neck is particularly weak, it might just be a bit too much for you. The second version, you place the tongue onto the roof of your mouth, and then you're going to nod the chin all the way in until it's in towards the chest, and then you relax the arms away and lie onto your back. So it's entirely up to you which way you choose to do now. So whether you're going to nod the chin all the way in or whether you're just going to slide out. So whichever way you've chosen, just relaxing onto your back and let your head roll from side to side. Beautiful. And just finishing off now with a lovely back bend. So we're coming onto our front. Now this one can be quite a challenge. And for those that really struggle to get the hold of the back leg, you can always use a strap and do one leg at a time, just pulling the strap around the leg and pulling it in towards you. And then using that front hand to help you. So you're going to lift up in that way. For those that are fine with getting a hold of the back leg, you're going to take both legs into your hands, holding from the outside of the foot and then push the feet into the hands and lift the toes up towards the ceiling. So you're trying to get the heels as far away from your bum as you can. Really push into the hands. Feel that openness through the front of the chest. Feel your back working. And take some deep breaths in and out here. Good, release down, but keep a hold of your feet. So if you've only done one leg at a time, take a hold of that second leg this time and come up with that second leg. If you did both legs just then, take a hold of both again, push the feet into the hands, try and lift the toes up towards the ceiling. Feel that nice stretch in the chest, openness through the front of your body. Squeeze your bum. Feel your back working, lifting you off the ground. Rocking, if you want a bit of an extra option here. And then slowly release down, pushing back into child's pose. Forehead relaxed on the ground. Bringing the hands in by the feet. And then lifting yourself up onto hands and knees, we're going to finish with downward puppy. Now the knees stay the hips stay above the knees reach the hands out in front of you drop the forehead to the ground 
and just feel that lovely stretch through your thoracic if the hands don't like this one then if the shoulders rather then bring the hands to the side and just try and imagine the chest coming down to the ground if you're quite flexible with this one you might want to come onto your chin instead of your forehead but just making sure that the bum doesn't sit back onto the heels the bum stays above the knees one more deep breath in and out and then slowly releasing up and coming onto your back for Shavasana but you may want to place some socks on something to keep you warm a jumper a rug maybe even placing something over the top of your eyes blocking out any light and just letting yourself relax down to the ground you guys look cozy and just allowing your body to sink down relax release So letting the muscles in your head, your neck, your face relax. Let go of your forehead. Just feel the gap between your hairline and your eyebrows widening. The gap between your eyebrows widening as you let go of any frown lines. Relaxing your eyelids. your eyes, cheeks, nose, jaw, relaxing your teeth, let them unclench, relax your tongue and just softening your lips, maybe even letting them part as they relax. As your head relax and sinks into the ground, just taking away any tension from your neck and just allowing your neck to relax. All the way from the base of your spine down to your shoulders, letting your shoulders sink and melt into the ground. Your upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, one by one, your thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, relaxing through your chest, in between the shoulder blades, so feel your back and rib cage sinking down with each exhale. Relaxing your lower back, your stomach, your pelvis, hips, bum. Relaxing the thighs, just letting them drop out of the sockets. Your legs just rolling out as they relax, no longer holding on. Relaxing your knees, calves, 
shins, ankles, heels, instep, ball of the foot, toes one by one, big toe, second, third, fourth and fifth toe, now noticing the back of your body, the back of the head, neck, shoulder blades, bum, heels, become aware of the body lying on the floor and the point of contact between your body and the floor, the heels and the floor, both the heels on the floor and the point where they touch the floor. Now from the top of the body, the head and the floor, the back and the floor, the right hand and the floor, the left hand and the floor, the right elbow and the floor, the left elbow and the floor, your bum and the floor, the backs of your legs and the floor, the heels and the floor, the whole body, becoming aware of your whole body on the floor. And imagine that your body is becoming heavy, heavier and heavier, the head's becoming heavy, the arms, the shoulders, your back, your legs. The whole body is heavy. Really intensify the feeling of heaviness and then gradually relax part by part. And now just feeling the body becoming lighter and lighter. The head is so light that it can even rise from the floor. The palms are becoming lighter, both shoulders, the back, your bum, your thighs, your heels. The whole body is light and weightless and when your body becomes weightless you feel as if you're rising up from the floor as if your whole body is just like a feather and now bringing your mind to your third eye, your eyebrow center, the space between your two eyebrows. And don't let your mind leave that point. I'm just gonna name a few objects and as I name each one, try and visualize it really quickly. And if you can't, then don't worry. Sometimes I'll say them slowly and sometimes fast, so don't worry if you can't keep up. I might come back to the same images. So bringing your awareness to your eyebrow center, becoming aware of the darkness, a pink rose, 
waves on the ocean, blue sky in the evening, dark night, tiny shining stars studied in the night sky. High mountain ranges with snow-capped peaks. A ship sailing on the high seas. A white sandy beach. A new forest with tall, dense trees. A dove, a galloping horse, a small hut in the woods. A burning fire, a stormy night, full moon, a mountain stream, a lonely rock in the mountains, a big garden of blooming flowers, a rising sun. And keeping your awareness focused on your eyebrow center, visualize a large lake with a lotus flower, a sailing boat, people swimming, a lonely wooden hut in the mountains, a high mountain with snow-capped peaks, a quiet evening, A beautiful sunset, chirping birds, tiger in the forest, elephant, cobra, a sound of ringing bells, waves on the ocean, ships at sail, full moon, calm and quiet evening in a moonlit valley. A mountain stream, a refreshing cold bath in the mountain stream. The experience of exhilaration And become aware of your breath, breathing in through your left nostril, exhale through your right nostril, breathe in through your right nostril and out through your left. And again, just alternate your nostril breathing for one more round. And now coming back to your eyebrow center, visualize the rising sun, red like a tomato, Clouds gathering in the sky, drizzling rain, fog all around, a pink rose, sunflower, apple, lettuce leaf, a hot water spring, tall pine tree, cluster of grapes. A lonely wooden hut in the valley, snow-capped peaks, mountain stream, a cold bath, a ship sailing on the sea, a lotus on a lake, and people swimming. And now just 
becoming aware of your whole body. Becoming aware of the sounds that are around you. Becoming aware of the room around you. And becoming aware of yourself. Visualizing your body in the room. And next, just repeating your positive affirmation from earlier to yourself three times. And if you've forgotten what it is, then feel free to make up something new. I am. And just starting to take some deeper breaths in. And letting all the air exhale out of your lungs. And again, taking a deep breath in, start to wriggle your fingers, wriggle your toes. And on your next big inhale, reaching the arms up and over your body, stretching out the heels, the toes, and when you're ready, slowly rolling onto one side and coming up to sitting. And taking a nice deep breath in to reach the arms up and over the head. And exhale to release the arms down. One more time, deep breath in. Bringing the hands down through the center of your body. Namaste.